<laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, uh, my name's Eilani, and I usually, I always need dot points. So however well this goes, it's um, testament to how good the program is in clearing my mind. Um, I might not make you laugh as much as everyone else, but I hope I don't make you sleep. So, um, well, I guess why I'm here, I really didn't want to be here, to be honest. And I was like, yeah, when I heard there was two spots left, I was like, Shona, my sister-in-law, they need it way more than me. I don't want to go, blah, blah, blah. I was very indignant to, with my mum. But then, because she kept persisting, I was like, okay, you know, I think it's better that I do go so I get you off my back and that I can be off your back too, so it works well both ways. Um, so I ended up coming and I didn't really know why I, would, why I was coming and I really didn't think that there would be results as such because I think I didn't, yeah, I don't know. I, I just felt like I was beyond help and all that. Um, but, yeah, so basically um, I came and I didn't realise that this program was so effective, like, straight off the bat um, because I actually had been struggling with, well, I don't know whether it was severe, but, like, depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, all of that last from last year. July-ish, so it's been like half a year, up until I came here, and then I didn't realise how having a routine actually really helps, because at home, like, I just didn't feel like doing anything, I was upset when I woke up in the morning, like that I actually woke up, and yeah, I didn't want to shower, blah, 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 I stay in the same clothes until my mum told me to change, and then I was like, fine, and then, yeah, so I've been having, like, when we started, because, like, we were doing, like, a lot of walking and stuff, um, I was sweating a lot, so I, I was having like three showers a day when I got here, so it was very different from how I was <laughs> before. Um, but yeah, physically um, also, I guess I'm like pr my pre-COVID weight, which is pretty good because I started like going really bad last year with my diet um, because I'm like a vegan vegetarian but like the unhealthy type, so this has really opened my eyes to what it really means to be plant-based. Um, and so, yeah, um, I think that the, yeah, the biggest thing that I've had coming here was just, like, even, like, meeting the young people. Like, I was fortunate to meet Anita's daughter, Lorraine, and, like, I really resonated well with her experience. And I, because I thought that I was the only one that was going through this in, like, the whole world, um, like, that, all that stuff um, from last year. But other people, other young people were experiencing the same thing in the church as well. Um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, and then, yeah, I think that, like, yeah. So I, I realised that, yeah, my depression all that was, like, really was getting better. And then I think it was, I forget what group study was the, the last one, Thursday. Um, I kind of, um, yeah, I had, like, a long as nap. And then I forgot to, I kept telling myself, I need to read the chapter before we have the group study. But I was like, no, nah, I'm just going to sleep. And then I slept. And then when I woke up, we had the group study. And I didn't know it was on, like, depression and what I had been going through. And, like, the case studies really killed me. Like, I couldn't sit there anymore. So I left. And I was like, oh, look, now, look at now what's happened because I overslept. I didn't get time to read. And so now I've missed out on all the good stuff out of the um, group study. And so I was blaming Satan and all that. And Bruce knows that. But Bruce, being the caring person he is, he came and checked up on me after. And we had a nice chat. And I was like, no, I think that was actually God that made me miss the group study so I could have that chat with Bruce because for like once, everything that Bruce was saying was like how I was feeling, what I was going through. Because so many people were trying to help me last year and they were saying all the nice stuff, like even like all the messages that I've heard, but nothing was going through. And I felt like they didn't really understand what I was going, going through. Um, but yeah, Bruce just really encouraged me and like all the messages have been so encouraging and they're things that, I was my I, God opened my eyes to last year, but instead of running to God, I was running away, and so now I think what I get from this program is to run to God, um, and yeah, I don't know. It doesn't take a lot of faith to believe in prophecy. Like you can just tell me that you know Babylon came, then Medo Persia, and I'll believe you. I don't need to look at an encyclopedia. I don't need a lot of faith for stuff like that. But yeah, it's just those little things and those things that are, like we say a lot, like how God is love. I think that's what I struggle with, and that's where I need faith to believe that like. I'm actually, like, to have some self-worth and to know that, like, Jesus actually does love me. Um, yeah, because I convinced myself that probation had closed and blah, 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 all of this. And, yeah, I don't know, you can have all these leadership roles in church. You can go to church for, like, half your life. 
But if you don't know Jesus, you're really wasting your time. Like, yeah, there's no point. Um, yeah, so I stopped saying love, I love you because, like, that's a thing that we do. Like, I love you when we, like, leave someone. Like, our cousins when we see them or even our parents. But I stopped saying that because I was like, if I really love you, I would be, a, like, you know, I would be like Jesus. Like, you know, I would show Jesus' character to you. I would, like, lead you to Jesus so you could have eternal life. Like, we always say, I love you to people, but do we really mean it? Like, do we actually show them what that means, you know? And so I stopped saying that, but I hope that after this, um, I'll be able to stick on to everything I've learned, the health message, God's love, everything. Um, and, yeah, and I'll be able to say I love you and really mean it. And, yeah, just live for Jesus now and not worry about what other people think. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, because I think that's my problem. Like, I like to please people. Yeah, so even, like, I have a burden for the youth, and, like, now I really mean it. Like, before I used to always say that, because I thought I did, but I didn't, because I was living exactly like the youth, even worse. So I don't know what... Anyways. Um, yeah, and I was, like, teaching at my Sabbath school. Like, I was two years older than the youth I was teaching, but I was, like, yeah. They didn't know my personal life. It was really bad. Um, and, yeah, so... Uh, where was I going with that? Oh, yeah, I was just very indignant um, towards my church because I felt very unsupported by the adults. And I was like, you know what, fine, then I'll just teach them. No one wants to teach, I'll teach, right? But I didn't even have a relationship with Jesus. And then I realised, well, only last year, unfortunately, I realised that, you know, God doesn't want me to please other people. He doesn't want me to do things that feel right for me. He just wants me to obey him, even if that means, you know, letting the youth you know, go. Like, if I don't have a relationship with him, I can't bring anything to the table for them. Um, so Jesus has been really opening my eyes. But, yeah, I think, yeah, I uh, yeah, and I don't know. I feel like from here, he's just telling me to go and sin no more. Yeah. Because yeah. we saw a snake, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to use our object lesson today. Um, today, Raymond, Telly, and I, we were walking, and we were, like, around the gully area, we were trying to get to this log that, um, that Bruce showed us. And then there was a, um, a snake, a snake lying on the path. And then we got freaked out and we like ran. And then we were like, wait, were we meant to kill it? Or, but obviously, <laughs> we were too scared to kill it anyway, but you know. Um, so, so yeah, we left it and I think, I don't know whether the other guys found it. Um, oh, okay, it was gone. Yeah, it looked pretty, yeah. Okay, and then we found out Pastor Andrew and his sons and wife were telling us that it was a tiger snake. Um, so it is quite dangerous, I guess. Um, but yeah, I guess what I want to remember from that, I hope I have the same reaction and the same repulsion to sin when I go back. When I see it from a distance, don't even get near it. Because, yeah, there are a lot of things, yeah, it's just not worth it at the end of the day. Like, yeah, and sin, like, takes you so far, like, where you would never expect. Yeah, yeah. And another object lesson that um, Bruce taught me uh, was the log that we went on. We are like, very brave going on that log. Um, but, yeah, just to keep your eyes on Jesus. I don't know if anyone else is going through the same stuff that I went through. Um, but, yeah, we can either focus on, like, the value of despondency, despair, depression, or we can keep our eyes on Jesus. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I think that Jesus, like, I don't know why. Why we're so ashamed of our message. Like, it's eternal life. You know, it just doesn't make sense when you think about it, why we're so ashamed to be different, ashamed to be like Jesus, because, yeah, it ultimately leads to eternal life. And, yeah, if you really love your family, then you'd want to give them that too. So, yeah. All right. That's it.